working with objects. Graphics, shapes, images, and even text boxes are all considered objects in Publisher. In fact, everything that you add to your page, aside from the background, will be considered an object. It's very important that you learn how to work with objects in Publisher for that very reason. It's a skill you need in order to be able to use Publisher with any amount of success. This lesson is going to cover some of the basics of working with objects. As the course progresses, we'll teach you more advanced features for objects that are available with Publisher 2016. We already discussed that objects are things that you add to your page, such as graphics and text boxes. Now let's review how to find and select objects on your page. Here is a built-in template that we're going to use for this lesson. Let's zoom in on the template and select an object. We're going to select the picture of the office buildings. To select an object, simply click your mouse on it. As you can see, a bounding box appears around the object. The bounding box has eight handles that appear as white circles in the corners and white squares on the sides of the object. You can use the handles to resize objects, as we'll learn later in this lesson. To move an object, click on the object to select it. Next, hover your mouse over the bounding box until you see a four-way arrow, as you can see here. Once you see this arrow, you can click and drag to move the object to a different location. You can also cut objects from a publication and move them elsewhere, or you can copy an object in a publication, then paste the copy elsewhere. To place them somewhere else in a publication, or in another publication, you choose Paste. Let's talk about how to use Cut, Copy and Paste. To cut means to remove an object or text from your page. Don't confuse this with Delete, however. When you use Cut, you are cutting it from your page and moving it to the clipboard then to its new location in the publication. You're not deleting it. When you delete an object, it's erased. To cut an object such as a graphic, picture or text box, click on it. You'll see the bounding box around it. Move your cursor over the box, then right click and select cut. The object then appears in your clipboard. When you copy an object, you leave the existing object where it is, but move a copy of it to your clipboard then to a new location in the publication. You can then put that copy anywhere else on the page, or in other pages. To copy an object, follow the same steps for cut, but choose copy. To cut or copy text, select the text by holding in your left mouse button and dragging it over the part of the text that you want to select. Right click, then select cut or copy. Once you cut or copy an object, you can then immediately paste it into a new location in the publication. To paste an object, move the cursor to where you want to position the object, right click and then select paste. Or you can click paste on the ribbon under the home tab. It's located in the clipboard group and is pictured at the top left here. Pasting text gets a little more detailed because you have more options for pasting in Publisher 2016. You have three options in the Paste Buttons drop-down menu. You can paste using the original formatting of pasted text. You can paste using the formatting of the majority of the text in the publication. This button here allows you to paste the text only. Any graphics or images will not be pasted, only text. To paste text, select then copy or cut the text, then go to the ribbon. Under the Home tab here, click on the drop down arrow below the Paste button, then select a Paste option. To cut, copy and paste, you can also click on the Home tab and go to the clipboard group, as well as right clicking on an object. Whenever you cut or copy anything in Publisher, it is automatically sent to the clipboard. The clipboard does just as the name implies. It holds what you copy and paste for it to use. The clipboard and its associated tools can be found in the Home tab at the far left of the ribbon. The clipboard group looks like this. Click the arrow at the bottom right of the clipboard group to see its contents. The clipboard will open up as a pane to the left of your workspace. When you use the paste command in the ribbon, you're pasting the most recent object that you cut or copied. 
The clipboard allows you to select any of the objects that you've cut or copied since opening Publisher. In fact, the clipboard would hold up to 24 text and graphical items such as objects. This means that you can go through your publication and copy 9 objects, for example, without having to worry about pasting them right away. When you're ready to paste the different objects into your publication, simply open the clipboard. Hover your mouse over the object in the clipboard that you want to paste. You'll see a drop down menu, as you can see here. Click on the drop down arrow and then select paste. You can then move the object to the exact location where you want it placed. To delete an object from the clipboard, click on the drop down menu and then click delete. To empty the clipboard, select clear all at the top of the clipboard menu. Let's say you accidentally delete something or deleted it and then decided you want it back. You grit your teeth and start to grumble. It's a lost cause, right? Wrong. Microsoft anticipated this problem and supplied an easy solution. The undo button. It looks like this on the quick access toolbar. The redo button is to the right of the undo button and it looks like this here. The redo button allows you to redo an action that you just undid or to repeat the last action. If publisher cannot redo the last action, the button will be faded. You can also rotate objects in publisher. Let's show you what we mean. Let's first delete these extra objects. Let's select this picture here. If you look at the bounding box around the object, you'll see a small circle above the box. Hover your mouse over the circle until you see an arrow that looks a lot like the recycle arrow used nowadays. It looks like this. When you see this arrow, you can rotate your object to the left or to the right, as far as you want. As you can see, we've rotated ours to the right. You can easily resize objects by dragging the handles that are on the bounding box. The squares at the top allow you to drag in to reduce the size of the object or out to increase the size. However, resizing like this can cause the object to become distorted. The corner handles that appear as white circles allow you to drag in to decrease the size or drag out to increase the size. However, Doing it this way keeps equal proportions to prevent distortion. You can also resize an object by changing its dimensions. To do this, select the object, then right click on the object. Choose Format Object from the context menu. Then click on the Size tab. Here, you can change the height and width of the object in inches. To prevent distortion, put a check mark in the box beside the lock aspect ratio so you can preserve the proportions. In addition to resizing and rotating your objects, you can also stack them on top of each other. You can stack any object. It can be a picture, graphic, text box and so on. Let's stack the three flowers shown here. To start stacking, select an object and move it on top of another. Here, you can see that we have these flowers appearing on top of the picture of the office buildings. Now, we can rearrange the stack order if we want. We can make it so that one picture appears on top of the other, or behind another. To do this, select the object that you want to move in front or behind another object, and then go to the Arrange group under the Drawing Tools Format or the Picture Tools Format tab, depending on whether you're stacking images or graphics. If we choose Send Backward from the drop down menu, it sends the object behind the previous object in the stack. If we choose Send to Back, it sends the object behind all other objects in the stack, as well as all other elements on the page. You can choose Bring Forward and either bring the object forward in front of the object directly behind it. You can also choose Bring to Front and bring it in front of all other objects and elements on the page. Once you stack objects, you can put them together as a group. This way, if you have to move the objects to another location on the page, the objects that you stacked will move together as if they were one object. To group a stack of objects, select all the objects by clicking on them while holding down the control key. As you can see here, all the objects are selected. Click the group button in the arrange group under the drawing tools format tab. Look at your objects now. They are still selected, 
but they appear as one object. In the last lesson, we learned how to create guides. Guides can be used to align objects in your publication. In addition, you can also align objects to other objects. To set what you want your objects to align to, go to the Page Design tab, and then go to the Layout group. We have it so our objects align to the guides, or the grid, and other objects. Let's show you how it works. In this example here, we inserted a picture of a cow. To place the image where we want it, we can drag and drop. However, we can also align it to other objects. When you align an object to a guide, the light blue guide gets darker when the object is aligned. As you can see here. When the object is aligned, release your mouse button. Now we're going to align the picture of the flowers here to the picture of the cow. First, let's ungroup the objects. Now click on the flowers and drag it towards the picture of the cow. You can see the dotted pink line that appears when we drag the image of the flowers. This tells us when it's aligned with the image of the cow.